Morning, Debbie. Morning, everybody. Romans 3. We're going to start at verse 21. We're talking about righteousness by grace, not by works. Uh, let's see. Do I want to start in 20 or 21? I'll read 20, but we're going to start in 21. 320. For nope, and I got amplified. For no person will be justified, freed of guilt, or declared righteous in his sight by trying to do the works of the law. For through the law we are, for we become conscious of sin, and recognize recognition of sin directs us toward repentance, but provides no remedy for sin. So just a reminder that the law, Paul just told us, was given to us to show us that we weren't perfect. <laughs> it was to show us that we sin, to inspire us to repent. Because you look at the whole law in the Old Testament, every time they looked at the law, they were supposed to take something to be killed. You know, you go this time of year, this is going to be for the nation of Israel, bringing this animal if you can afford it, down to this animal if you can't. This is your personal time to go to Jerusalem to have all these animals, this, that, and the other. So, the interesting thing with with uh, the Christmas season in Bethlehem, Bethlehem was the town that raised all the lambs for sacrifice. And isn't it interesting that through the census and through the way everything God had his hand on, he had baby Jesus be born in Bethlehem, the Lamb of God, the ultimate sacrifice, to be born in the town that was the place that produced all the lambs for sacrifice fascinating little side note let's see how far we get verse 21 but now the righteousness of god has been clearly revealed amplify says independently and completely apart from the law though it is actually confirmed by the law and the words written of the prophets so now he's tying a thread yeah we don't live by the law anymore and the law was to show us that we're sinners but we're, we're saved by righteousness and faith in Jesus. But the law still has some value to show us how to live a better life. But we don't have to do the law. Because he says, but now the righteousness of God has been clearly revealed, independently and completely apart from the law. Jesus is coming to show you these differences. Though it is actually confirmed by the law, it's separate, but yet it's still confirmed. And the words of the writings of the prophets. Even the Old Testament was talking about faith in God is not by works. It's by believing in God. So let's keep going. 22. This righteousness of God comes through faith in Jesus. For all those, Jewish or Gentile, who believe and trust in him and acknowledge him as God's son, there is no distinction. Well, there's a little bit there. He finally gave us a simple statement for us to understand without talking in Paulisms. <laughs> it is, but it isn't, but maybe it is. A little bit of this, a little bit of that. He finally made it pretty clear for us. The righteousness of God comes through faith in Jesus. Simple. So if I believe in Jesus, we talked a little bit about last week, I'm righteous. We don't talk like that though, do we? Even some of the old hymns didn't really sing like that, did they? Sinner saved by grace. Yeah. You know, when they sang Sinner Saved by Saved Grace, this I don't know if that song has righteousness in it at all. Well, that's a descriptive word. Right. And 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 I understand the sentiment. We were sinners saved by grace, yes, but we're no longer sinners. We do sin, but we're no longer sinners. We do no longer identify as a sinner. Once we are saved, in Christ, we are now righteousness. I am righteous in God's eyes. So I describe myself the way he describes me. But I like to go back to describe myself the way everybody else does or the way, the way I feel, don't we? And Scripture clearly tells us it has nothing to do with the way we feel. I feel like a rascal an awful lot. But God doesn't go by, describe me by my feelings. He describes me by who he says I am. He says I am righteous. No matter how I feel. 